So you mentioned this word rag. Oh, Brett, yeah. do you know what a rag is? What's a rag, <laughs> Brett? If it's an acronym, like this, if it's an yeah. acronym and not a word, my understanding, is, let's see if I get this right. My understanding is it allows you to customize the response based on not the model, but the extra input you're giving it. So right. I guess you're inject, you're not injecting it at prompt time as a human, but it's something in the middle that you're injecting like your PDFs or your knowledge base. I mean, for me as an instructor, I've answered tens of thousands of questions. So one use case that I want to explore is how do I take those tens of thousands of questions I've answered over the years, inject them into an existing LLM, and then get like custom answers in my voice to my students. Right. I don't know if there's anybody out there that would be interested in that, but mm -hmm. I've, I don't even, I'm not really even sure where to get started with that other than just pick a model and figure out how to inject some data. Is that rag? Is that what I'm doing when I so do that? There are two things that you should, would look at for that kind of use case. There's either rag and there's also this other idea of fine tuning. So let's mm. talk, take a look at rag. What's involved with rag? There's for rag, you're not going to just shove your, all your questions and just like shove it at the model or even ask a question and just throw all your, you know, 10,000 questions at the model with your question, because it's just going to get, well, first off, there's a, well, there's a whole bunch of problems. So models have something called a context size. And for a long time, context size was limited to like 512, 512 bytes or 512 tokens. There are these, oh, okay, let's roll back a little bit. Tokens, what is a token? So a token is a, a common word part. Chair would be a token on its own, but indistinguishable is probably, there's probably a, a token for in, and there's probably a, another token for distinguish, and there's probably another token for a bull. And so it might not actually work out like that, but it, it would be like three tokens. Or And so most of the time that we're dealing with these models, we're dealing with tokens. So it's important to know that tokens are kind of words or word parts. So you're not going to just throw out a whole bunch of tokens and, you know, hope that it gets the Right, because there's this context size, and context is measured in number of tokens that can be added to the model as a question, as well as what you get back. And so there are some models that have really large context sizes. You know, OpenAI's ChatGPT has a really big context size. One of the things that Google put out really recently was Gemini. And one of the benefits of Gemini is this massive context size. But even with a massive context size, feeding it all that data takes time because yeah. of, oh, I don't know, physics. You know, just uploading all that content takes a while to do. And then models that are run locally, if you have a model that has a really large context size, well, it needs a lot of memory on your system to run. And so if you are just barely squeaking by loading the model and you yeah. have a large context size, it's going to crash the machine. So you, you, you need to have, make sure that the model is really small compared to the overall RAM you have or uh, VRAM that you have yeah. to account for the, all the rest of the context size that you get. So all these are, are problems and there's ways to deal with the problems. And one of the ways is with this retrieval augmented generation. And so what you do is take your, your questions and answers or maybe your PDF documents or your text documents or whatever or source documents that you get have and you give it to a process. And the first thing that that process needs to do is split out all that text. Well, first off, make sure we just have text. So PDFs are a problem because it's really hard to get text out of PDFs in some right. cases. But once you've got all that raw text, now you need to split it up. And there's different ways of splitting it up. And the goal of splitting it up is that you want to just feed the most relevant pieces. If you ask a question to your massive data set of how do I spin up Nginx in Swarm, I know you love Swarm, so how do I spin up Nginx on Swarm? Then you don't want to give it all the data, you just want to give it all the questions and answers that deal with Swarm, which mm -hmm. I'm sure are, well, there, there's a lot on your place. Yeah. So there's so you get give all the stuff about Swarm, but how do you find that? So you're splitting up all this massive text into these smaller chunks, and then, and different ways of creating chunks. It could be based on characters, number of characters, number of tokens, number of words, number of sentences, or maybe even sentences that are related to each other, so are semantically related to each other. So you generate these chunks, 
And then you have, you send it to a model, a special model, an embedding model that converts that, that chunk into an array of vectors, an array of floating point numbers. And those, that floating point, that array of floating point numbers describes the content of that bit of text. And so is once you've got that array of numbers, all the arrays of numbers of all the embeddings or of all the chunks, no matter how long or short those chunks are, are all going to be the exactly the same length, the same number of, of floating point numbers. And then once you, because of that, it becomes mathematically for a computer, not for me, but mathematically really easy to compare and uh, compare all those. And you can find, you know, for the how many or how do I spin up Nginx in Swarm, it's really easy to mathematically compare and find all the chunks that are very close or very similar to that, that question. And mm-hmm. now you can just hand it the 10 or 15 or 100 chunks, which is going to be a lot smaller than the tens of thousands of questions that you had before. And now you can pan that stuff off and and then the model can like process it and figure out, okay, well, based on the information you've given me, here is the here is the answer. Yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> so it sounds like rag is a good thing. Yes. It sounds like rag is something that I, I want to be using. Yeah. 